annuals. So annuals have been a mainstay of European gardening for about two centuries or so. The thing is they're basically easy. You sow them, they flower the same year and that's it. And they flower generally really well. Uh, we've always made a distinction between hardy annuals and half hardy annuals. Hardy annuals are the ones that originate mostly from around the Mediterranean or other Mediterranean climates. Now of course being annuals they've got to produce seed so there's a real biological imperative to produce lots of flowers over a long period to make absolutely 100% sure they get pollinated because if they don't get pollinated no seed and the species doesn't survive. Survive. These are cornflowers. They're part of a mix I sowed last autumn, which I'm afraid has been a bit over-dominated by the cornflowers, uh, but they've given us a good few months of, of flowering. Uh, this was a mix of, of various Mediterranean species, uh, some of which are good garden plants and others aren't. Um, there's one here which I rather admired in Portugal. Um, very nice dark scented yellow daisies, but I discovered when I grew it in the garden that the fl flowers close up at midday, so not such a good garden plant after all. So in amongst this mix we've got pink lavateras, uh, white ami and uh, larkspurs as well and the lavatera has been particularly nice here. So when we talk about annuals we're actually talking about plants that have actually some quite different life cycles uh, and a good one to talk of start off with really is the so-called English marigold calendula officinalis uh, which is quite different uh, to the so-called French or African marigolds although they're all members of the enormous daisy family. So English marigolds have a very typical Mediterranean life pattern that is to say they germinate in the autumn when the first rains come and they grow slowly through the winter often flowering by the end of the winter because winters in the Mediterranean are cool and that's when it rains um, and here we are in May and they're in full flower but they probably won't last much longer because the sun will soon dry everything up um, and they'll produce seed um, and that'll be the end of their life for that year. Although gives them a uh, a cooler wetter summer like you have in Britain the chances are uh, from an autumn sowing they'll carry on flowering right the way through the summer and you, if you have a mild autumn they can carry on flowering uh, they can even carry on flowering right until Christmas looking very very messy but nevertheless uh, an amazing staying power if conditions are right. So here we are in a patch of borage. I uh, don't know how many plants there are here, uh, quite a few. They're quite bulky plants. Borage is one of those annuals that really does best if you just let it sow itself around in, in the autumn. Sp sp spring sown ones simply don't perform nearly so well. This has been in flower for months. Uh, it's a fantastic bee plant. There's honeybees all over this. Uh, each flower is, doesn't occupy a great deal of space and a lot of the impact of borage is this kind of misty look of all these very hairy uh, buds but uh, if you do get a, a close-up on the flower they are really exquisite blue. Uh, as I said flowers for months uh, you can use the flowers in, to decorate salads because they, they are edible. Um, historically this has been used as a, as a herb to treat depression. Okay so these are larkspurs uh, which is actually a member of the delphinium genus but unlike delphiniums these are only annuals. So here we are we've got another Mediterranean annual something that germinates in the autumn, grows through the winter, flowers in early summer. <coughs> which means that in the British climate uh, you can sow these outside in the autumn. They're pretty tough, they're, they'll grow through the winter, it means you'll have really nice strong plants uh, in, in the spring uh, which will then mean they'll actually keep on going for longer in the summer. But as you can see they're pretty tall. Um, I'm 1.85 meters and these come up to my nose. Uh, so uh, these are not, these used to be very 
fashionable, they used to be very popular, much less so now. And I suspect the fact that they are rather tall is possibly something to do with it, although you can in fact get shorter varieties. But they're really rather lovely. They seed around all over the place, at least uh, here on this very light soil. Um, and as well as this, which is the original colour, they come in white and pink as well. And uh, they are rather beautiful. Uh, and if you can uh, if you can grow them well, well they're very rewarding. So the other kind of annuals are half-hardy annuals, which come from warmer climates, which means that the little seedlings, or indeed the whole plant, are not frost hardy. So quite a lot of these, petunias are a good example, come from quite warm climates, uh, which generally means they're started off as uh, seedlings uh, inside in, in greenhouses or polytunnels. Others, uh, like sunflowers for example, uh, can be started off uh, outside, but really only after the danger of the last frosts has, has passed. And of course sunflowers are a terrific fun annual, really really tall ones and short ones and different coloured ones um, and um, terrific uh, var variation and a, a nice family plant to grow. So zinnias, which were a real Victorian favourite and they went out of fashion but coming back into fashion again, are one of those plants that absolutely has to be grown as a half-hardy annual in Britain and Northern Europe. Uh, they're not at all frost-hardy and they take a few months to reach flowering size if you're growing them from seed. Uh, they're popular for their colours primarily, I mean a wide range of colours, uh, including some really lovely deep pinks and deep rusty red oranges. Uh, so these are, for the mo most people, realistically are going to be, be buying these as young plants from the garden centre because they have to be started off uh, February, March in a greenhouse and not really planted out until really the middle of May after the danger of the last frost has, has passed. Um, if you've got a greenhouse or very good light inside then you can start them yourself but they, they've got to have that early protection.